I think when you love yourself, it also reflects in your dating. It reflects in who you're with. It reflects in what you allow to happen, how long you allow it to go on. What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of A Scared to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. We have a special guest with us today. Let me tell you a little bit about today's guest, because this is going to be a good one. She's an entrepreneur. She's a herbalist. She's a doula. She does hair. She also uh, has her own self-care products and so much more. And for, for those who saw the Instagram post, who saw the picture of my wife and uh, it went crazy on Twitter and on Instagram, she did my wife's hair, okay? <laughs> Pray for us community, let's show some love to Fresca. How are you doing this evening? Hi, I am great. How are you? I am good. Thanks again for taking some time out of your busy day because I know you have a lot going on. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I know with you doing hair, I'm sure you have all the inside scoop with everything that goes on in the relationship world with all the conversations. Because I know when we're in a barbershop with men, uh, we we talk about everything. So I can imagine <laughs> what you talk about with your clients while you're doing their hair. Uh, first question is, how has dating been for you post-divorce? And is there really pee in a dating pool? Mm. Ooh, dating for me personally has been, um, it hasn't been bad because I think that what most people don't realize is when you're dating, or at least when you're trying to date intentionally, a lot of times you end up dating people that are almost reflections of yourself. And it's um, either a reflection of your past self or of your future self or of your current self. And for me, I've been lucky enough to where I've only been connecting with men that are either my present or my future self. So it's been working out. Um, I think, is there a P in the dating? Of course, of <laughs> course. But I don't think that's changed. I, I don't think even in the time with Jesus and Mary that all the men were great, you know? So I don't think it's changed. Um, yeah, I think it's literally just about making sure of what you allow yourself, what, who has access to you. Because, mm. you know, um, people are going to be attracted to you no matter who you are. Everyone is going to be attracted to you. Everyone or more people are going to be attracted to you. Now it's up to you to uh, decide who you allow into your circle, into your energy um close to you you know it's up to us to really filter all of that out but yeah, dating hasn't been terrible i feel bad when girls are like girl i hate it and i'm like oh i don't know i just had dinner on the lake <laughs> i don't want to say i hate it i'm kind of it's going well for me <laughs> um but yeah i also go out very much only desiring really good experiences and if I feel like it's going to be a bad experience I just won't put myself in that position so that may be another reason why um my dating experiences have been different from others mm -hmm. no that's good because sometimes you hear people who say you know because because I believe the same thing I believe you are what you attract I believe that there's a certain degree of based on your confidence level, you will attract a, a certain kind of person. That's just my belief. And I hear, I get this feedback a lot of times that people say, well, I attract bums or I attract, you know, this person or that person. So is that saying that I'm a bum or I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is. But you attract everyone. It's not just bums, you know? I think depending on your confidence level and your level of healing at that time, um, you only communicate with the bums, right? Maybe you only give your number out to the bums, but I highly doubt when you go out 
only terrible women are throwing themselves at you. Only girls with face tattoos and three missing teeth. Like, no, you have doctors that are most likely also attracted to you. You have, you know, but depending on how you feel about yourself and if you feel like you can be with a doctor, right? If you feel as though that is your, again, your reflection, then it will work. But if it's not, and yeah, but if you keep picking bones, that that has more to do with you <laughs> than anything else. And that's the, yeah, <laughs> that yeah. is the problem, sadly enough. <laughs> yeah, man, I, and I agree because not because I've you know I've been re, I'm remarried now, and my confidence level this time around yeah. is higher. So exact. So I got according to my confidence level and who I'm married to now with my wife. And I know from past relationships, no shade to past exes or whatever. No shade if you're watching this or listening to this. <laughs> All I'm saying is my confidence level isn't where it is today uh where you know my confidence level was lower back then to where i am today and that took some maturity and some growth and stuff like that so that's just my belief yeah and the right person also grows your confidence so mm. it continues to grow you know compared to it just being where it was when you met it continues to grow it continues to be better um yeah you know and i think sometimes people connect what did you learn from your divorce oh uh, that's a good question i wrote that down hold on, hold on. <laughs> i wanted to be ready um okay so i learned that my desires are not automatically somebody else's desires mm. um I think at the time I wanted a family, it does not mean that my partner wanted a family, you know, um, and making sure that communication continues throughout almost like every six months. I'm at this point now where I'm like, my next relationship, I want weekly meetings <laughs> the same way people do it at work. Are we on the same road? Are we... Um, going to the same place you know we can be in the same car which is what the marriage is but if we're not going to the same destination this is going to be a long ride so yeah um what else yeah i learned to be patient um just to have more patience in general whether it was with myself or even just with the divorce process that that that's not fun um so yeah you really learn <laughs> you learn to stand still when lawyers are telling you to stand still <laughs> so it gives you a lot of time to really reflect and really figure out what you did wrong and what was done wrong in this one so that you could better yourself for the next one. Um, I went to therapy because of divorce and I'm still in therapy. I love my therapist. I want that lady at my next marriage. Um, I, yeah, I don't think that I would be who I am if I was still in my past relationship. And it sucks to say, because you don't want to, you don't want to say that, you know, yeah. like, oh, person and I married them and it was my choice, but thank God I'm not with them. And that's, that's not something you want to say, you know, but I'm grateful for the growth and, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to say, I do it all over again. But um <laughs> <laughs> would you do it all over again? I get what you're saying though. <laughs> oh my god, that's too funny. But yeah. 
No, I, I totally understand. Because I think for myself, I'm grateful for, and, and it sounds funny, but I'm grateful for my divorce because I am better this time around. I am a better person. And I think going through that experience because there were some things that I've done wrong that I needed to correct. And statistically, second divorce, I mean, um, second marriages, the divorce rates are higher. I think they're like 67% because they didn't learn anything from the first marriage. They thought it was just their ex fault. They didn't take accountability for their own actions. So they're thinking if I can just marry again because I got rid of Jane or I got rid of, yeah, <laughs> then I'll be better. And then they get remarried and the stakes are higher and their divorce rates are higher because they still carrying the same baggage that they did in the, in the past marriage. Or even just even outside of marriage, just regular relationships. People a lot of times talk about how they're, I date the same men. And I'm like, do you, that's, that's you, you know, you allow them in your life. You allow second dates, you allow third dates, you see the red flags and you move it to the side. Yes, you're going to keep dating the same men in different shoes because you're not healing. And the moment you heal, the moment you, yeah, I saw a hat that said go to therapy. And I was like, I need to buy that. So people know that the moment you start to reflect on yourself a little, the moment you just even, sometimes it's also a heartbreak. You know, you're still heartbroken from this last one. And then you jump into this next one thinking that it's going to magically fix things. And that's not even how magic works. So <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I'm always just like, that's not even magical because that's not even how magic works. <laughs> Did you not read the book? Because that's wrong. But <laughs> yeah, you just, there's no healing of a relationship without the healing of oneself. Mm -hmm. um, there's no bettering of a relationship without the self-reflection and understanding of your own mistakes and your own flaws, you know? Mm -hmm. No one is, so the idea of like, I'm perfect and they're the ones messing up. And it's like, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, yeah, no one is perfect, so. That's true. How do you know when, and even maybe from your own experience, like how do you know where your faults lie? Like, is it that you maybe talk to your ex-husband saying, maybe you had a conversation and he told you what you were doing wrong or like, how do you know, where does that awareness come from, from knowing that where you were actually doing wrong? Um, I, it wasn't, well, honestly, can we pause? Um, how do I know what my flaws, my, so communication wasn't our best thing. Um, so no, it wasn't that my ex was like, oh, well, these are your flaws. Um, I think it was actually me realizing after I would do something over and over and it didn't work that like, okay, this isn't it, you know? Um, and then again, like you said earlier, um, being a hairstylist, I get to communicate with so many different people every day. So actually at the beginning of our issues, I remember communicating with women that were married for 20 years, mm -hmm. women that had just been married, women that divorced and women that stayed and they should have divorced. And um, it was great because I really was able to, through their experience, I was able to really learn what was best for me um, because I, I had no one to speak to besides them really. So yeah, I think realizing through them who I wanted to be and who I did not want to be, you know? And a lot of the women that stayed I didn't want to be like them. Um, 
they they weren't always happy and being content with your answer of staying and being happy are two different things and they weren't happy with their decision and i wanted to be happy with my decision um yeah but i think my flaws and a lot of them were pretty they were pretty honest with me anytime i would be like and then he did this and then i did this and they would be like well did you have to do that and i'd be like well <laughs> um yeah, but I think they, they were very good at holding a mirror to my face and also being mirrors, you know. I think in times of deciding to divorce, deciding to separate in general from someone you've been with for a long time, it's good to always surround yourself by people who are examples of what you want. Um because if not, you can surround yourself with people that chose to stay, that chose misery, that chose arguments, that chose fighting, and they think that's marriage, right? And now they start to poison your idea of marriage. You know, I, I've met people that never want to be married again. They're like, oh, no, I don't want to be married because my last one. And I was like, he sucked him independently, you know? But this person you're with now is amazing and is there for you and is loving and is gentle. And if that's what that person wants, you know, maybe you should think about it a little and open yourself up to it. But I really do think that like, sometimes we listen to the wrong people and we stay and then it really just poisons what marriage really is, which is like, really great if you marry the right person i got i'm one of those girlies i got married young the girls that are like oh get married at 25 have a baby buy a house that was me so um yeah like i was like this sounds fantastic <laughs> <laughs> you know which is really great if you marry the right person and I think um, sometimes people marry the wrong person and they, they will try, they talk themselves into thinking that's marriage and they'll try to talk you into thinking that's marriage. You know, so being very careful, but yeah. And, and how, old, how old were you when you first, in your, in your uh, first marriage, how old were you? Uh, we got, I was 24 when we got married, but I've been with him since seven. So I met him in high school, um, all through college, and after college, we got married. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I married when I was 24, too. Yeah. yeah. You know, because, you know, that's, that's when you grow up wanting marriage, mm -hmm. that's literally almost the, the age you get married at. Like, <laughs> most of my friends that got divorced, um, and they're, they grew up wanting marriage. And they got married young. That's that's the goal, you know? You meet your person and you think that that's it. And mm -hmm. yeah, but the brain isn't really developed until 27. And now I'm like, no one should be allowed to be married before 26. <laughs> because- You're not thinking. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just scientifically. <laughs> that's a new <laughs> rule we should implement. Nobody <laughs> marries until you're 27. It's like getting your driver's oh, license. You know? I have to get a petition or something going because <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah. we should maybe maybe we should name this show. Uh, no one should marry until after 27. Maybe we should name. <laughs> <it or something. laughs> no marriage until 27. <laughs> yeah, because that is. I'm like only then do you think clearly because before then. All you have is love. You know, when you're in college, you're poor. You're eating ramen noodles, one pack of ramen noodles splitting you for two meals. Like, all you have is love, you know? And then once you become an adult, you buy a house, you have children, you're like, oh, <laughs> we need a little bit more than just love, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm big on like, now I look at my little sisters and they're like in relationships and I'm like, no, 
like not until you're 27 um yeah because right now i'm like girl he gives you a steak and you think it's love because you're poor you're in college like right now a good steak and potato meal you would be like he's the one i know so, right yeah <laughs> oh my god that is funny <laughs> what is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships letting things go like i think i don't think men are as forgiving and as um allowing of red flags pass as women are and i think um a lot of women or at least a lot of the women i speak to even me i'm like sometimes when i tell my story to people i'm like damn that was a red flag <laughs> Anyways, girl, don't listen to that. Moving on, you know? Um, yeah, I think we could really save ourselves if we catch the red flags at the beginning and we just, and that's for both. I think not just women, but I think for both men and women, it would really keep us out of trouble um, because a lot of times those red flags become red balls and red balls become red bowling balls and red bowling balls become you know a red dog and it's it, it grows and it just it's not always small it continues to grow you know um yeah i think mm. that another one what's another actually figuring out your communication skill is huge um i think just being a hairstylist i'm able to speak to a lot of women and i don't give advice that i wouldn't take so sometimes i'm like oh well, have you considered sending it in a text message if speaking to someone is too hard for you to do to where you get emotional you start crying and you don't you know then write it down and maybe if you communicate with him that way that'll but i think actually figuring out your own particular communication style and not just hoping someone figures it out for you um I think that'll be, yeah, those mm -hmm. will be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, and I ask this question every show. So if it's, it's if it's, I'm interviewing a man, I usually ask him what are some of men, what are um some of the mistakes that men make in relationships? So, you know, so I ask each uh, sex accordingly. So, uh, how is it being a businesswoman while dating? Is it, easier is it more difficult like to all my entrepreneurs out there uh, who might be listening to this or watching this uh what is it like for you being a businesswoman dating um i don't think it really changes anything i think if anything maybe my schedule is a bit more open um so i make my schedule so i think that if anything that could be an additional like good thing but i don't think it really i think working and dating in general just sucks um yeah it's one of those things i'm like gosh oh, i gotta finish working and then i have to go on a get dressed put pants on go talk to this person hope we fall in love <laughs> so it's just um yeah i don't think it's any different i think dating is hard work working is hard work <laughs> um either way you're working and you're tired <laughs> so yeah i don't mm. think it's not special <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah i mean I, I see what you're saying and the reason i ask that question because sometimes being an entrepreneur and running your own business and say you're dating someone who's possibly just working a nine to five kind of thing Sometimes I wonder how that conversation goes during the dating process. Like, are you two speaking two totally different languages, you know, and, and trying to make those two worlds mesh if you end up potentially being with this person, you know? So that's why I asked the question. I, I didn't know if it made a difference or not. Uh, from seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Um, 
I learned that you should not stay for the kids. Mm. Um, I think a lot of times the kids want you apart. The kids feel what the parents feel and the idea of like, oh, we'll just stay miserable for the next six years until you're out of high school. I'm like, I don't think that's a positive. You know, I don't think it's helping the kids. Um, I learned that marrying the wrong person can really affect you. Like, emotionally, physically, financially, all of it. Um, yeah. Mm. And I think a lot of a lot of girls, a lot of times what they end up doing is they end up um, dating a man like their father, you know? And that's what I ended up doing. And I think only when my father became a better man did I desire a better man. So, yeah, you know, it really makes me think hard and makes me really want to be careful um, with the person that I bring into my daughter's life to make sure that person is the best man. So because odds are she's going to date a man like her father figure, you know? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I heard a statistic the other day, or I don't know, I want to say it was scientific, but I heard someone talk about the reason we marry, say, like someone that's like our mom or our dad is because we try to, as adults, we feel like we can fix that relationship through whoever we're with. Rewrite the story, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, and a lot of times that story is not meant to be rewritten. Um, and sometimes stories need to an end and there's nothing you can do about it. And I think, um, yeah, and if you're young enough, you'll rewrite it. If you get older and you're still trying to rewrite the story, listen, again, that is a you problem. You know, we, we cannot be 65 trying to rewrite the same story over and over, like, sir, You've been stabbed 12 times. Stop dating these women that keep stabbing you. Like that's on you, you know? Um, but yeah, I think a lot of times, especially the younger, your very first or second relationships end up just being a reflection and you're just trying to rewrite that story. You know, like, oh, well, he, he was just like my daddy and I was thinking that maybe, and it's like, did your daddy become a better person? No. Mm. Mm. Yeah. you know yeah odds are <laughs> yeah. if he's just yeah. like he's just like your dad um and that's the part that sucks you yeah. know and yeah i was big on like when i started going through my process i think i actually started therapy it was like we had one session of couples therapy and i remember being like i'm gonna come back next week and then I was like, everybody needs to go to therapy. <laughs> like, I was like Oprah. I was just like, you go, you go to therapy. Have you considered therapy? They're just like, ma'am, do you want a bag? And it's H-E-B. But um, yeah, I was just like, everyone needs therapy. I, I told my dad and I was just like, you need therapy. If you go to therapy, you could just be so much better. And maybe you'll leave this woman. And I was just like, I was just, it's, a, it's crazy how it like awakened me. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think that's making sure your decisions and being happy with your decisions, again, not being content with them, because if you're only content with your decisions, your children will not be happy with them. So making sure you're happy with your decisions really does pour into your children. And that's something I really learned from my parents very much. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, because I think sometimes, um, especially if we're dating, uh, and there's nothing wrong with, you know, if you serial dater, if, you, if that's what you do, that's what you do. But sometimes we can date uh, the same person, just different faces. You know, you 
keep running to the same person over and over again. Like you say, all of us now now it's a you issue. It's a you issue because that they're a reflection of you. And then again, girls are always like, well, I I attract all these guys. And I'm just like, people have eyeballs, they're gonna be attracted, you know? So it's bizarre to it's what you allow, you know. I attract men with literal face tattoos. Does that mean that that's who I'm going to go on a date with? No, but if that's who you choose to give your number to, go out with, go on a date with, and then now you're mad that he's doing things that he looked like he was going to be doing. I that you know, like it's bizarre. Um, yeah, don't hire somebody for a job and then be surprised that they don't qualify because they didn't even want the job. Like mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know or rushing i think a lot of people also rush they go on two dates and they're like that's my boyfriend and i'm just like do you know anything about him you know like you guys went to the movies which is silent for three hours. um i don't think that that qualifies <laughs> and now four months later you guys are broken up and yeah that's because i wasn't <laughs> you didn't do anything too bad. Mm -hmm. You could, could have just went to the movies and you could have went on a date with a different man, but that's not what you did. You decided to make him your boyfriend. Mm -hmm. and, you, and now you broke your own heart. You broke your own heart. I love it. That's real. I love it. Because you can say no. And and, and I tell I tell singles this a lot because if you go on a date, one date, if you didn't like it, it's okay to be like, you know what, hey, we can be friends or whatever. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? But I don't, I'm not feeling you on that level and it's okay. And then I've, I've heard stories of where women say that they're afraid to say no because they're afraid of what the man might do. <laughs> and, and that's a whole. That's scary. Yeah, that's a whole situation within itself because I think there was a college basketball player he asked for some girl's number and he killed her yeah that happens a lot there was a um i think like it was like in new york he like slit a girl's throat mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, no um i don't know i don't ever really put myself around people <laughs> so that's one thing but i it's really sad that we have to feel that unsafe in this world. Um, it's really scary that we have to think of how to save our lives when someone asks for our number, you know? Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the world we live in, unfortunately. Uh, because, and I guess I'm telling my age, but I grew up in an era where you just got rejected. You got rejected. That was it. You went yeah. on with your life. You know, I, I know she was cute, but dang, oh well, she told me no, keep it moving. But in this day and age, you, you can't say no to people, you know, so. But that's another topic for another show. Yeah. <laughs> this has been a phenomenal show. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by and taking some time out of your busy schedule i have one more question to ask you before we leave okay. and this is this is uh no no trick question no anything like that just let me know what you think in your opinion is it easier to love yourself or is it easier to love someone else oh <laughs> <laughs> um i think a lot of people would say it's easier to love yourself but it's actually easier to love someone else because a lot of times with someone else, you tend to find the best in them. And very rarely do you find the best in yourself, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, you know, that's why we're able to forgive someone else for something that if we did, we would never forgive ourselves. But if someone else does it, you're able to forgive them, you know, you're able to move past it. You're able to, oh, we can talk about it and, you know, but if you did it in your own head, you would just be eating yourself up. 
you know, you'd never be able to move past it. You'd never be able to forgive yourself. And somehow magically you're over here being a whole God, uh, fairy godmother to someone else, you know? Um, yeah, I think it's a lot easier to love someone else. It's extremely hard to truly love yourself. And I think those that actually love themselves tend to have a lot of boundaries. And a lot of times that makes it, it makes it uncomfortable for others. Because mm. most aren't accustomed to boundaries, you know? Um, me, I, I would tell you after my therapist again, me and her, we're besties. She doesn't know it, but we're, we're best friends. Um, pay for, you got a paid friend. Yeah, you know, she's a little expensive, but it's cool, it's cool. Um, I like her shoes. So, <laughs> but, yeah, I would say if it wasn't for her, I would not at all understand how to, one, create boundaries, how that is a form of self-love, that being at zero percent because you're pouring into everyone else is not loving yourself, you know? And it's honestly not loving them. Um, mm. it's, it's draining on all fronts. You know, and I think a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people actually know how to love themselves. And when you start to love yourself, it really changes your world. It changes what you allow. I think when you love yourself, it also reflects in your dating. It reflects in who you're with. It reflects in what you allow to happen, how long you allow it to go on. Um, I follow this uh, group on Instagram and it was something that happened and everyone was just like, oh my gosh, that's so embarrassing. And from what I saw, the man embarrassed the woman, but from what I saw, it did not look like it was out of character for him. It just looked like this was an important day. Mm. Oh, and she was she was hoping that he wouldn't embarrass her today, but it's his character to do so. He's done it so much. She's allowed it so much. She's never created boundaries with him. So yeah, your family is here. And yes, you're in a wedding dress, but this is who I am, you know? And that to me was a, a reflection of her lack of self-love because that wasn't a, a different day for him, you know? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a special uh, for her. But to him, he was just like, what do you mean? I, I got to be a goofball. Like, oh, this is who I am, you know? Like, he he didn't care that he was going to be ruining her dress or ruining her day or making her mad or sad. He had no interest in that. And I think that that's more a reflection on her lack of self-love. Because when you love yourself, you would never let someone treat you such a way multiple times to the point of getting to the wedding day and they still behave this way mm. you know mm. um but again like i said it's easier to love someone else mm. that's good i yeah i hear you because a lot of times we get caught up and uh we get caught up in the physical and the the you know the things that they possess opposed to what's their heart like, do they have integrity? Or do they have character? Are they kind? Are they thoughtful? Are they, uh, you know, mindful? Just these different things. Do they have empathy? Stuff like mm -hmm. that. You know, it's, it's it's not sexy. It doesn't sell well. But when you have those traits, more than likely that person's a keeper. But we get caught up in the physical. And then... You know, he was sexy when you first met him, but he's not sexy anymore because right. now you realize that his, his character doesn't match what he looked like. You know, <laughs> it's not even a now you realize. It's the fact that a lot of times we realized it then. We mm. just didn't leave. You know, like I can't possibly be like, oh, yeah, after 12 years with my aunt magically started acting you know it's like no I have to 
again, when I tell people the story, I'm like, anyways, <laughs> moving past that red flag <laughs> that happened in the first year, like, damn. But, um, you know, it's, it's us. And it's the fact that at that time, there was no self-love. So you let it go. Mm -hmm. You know, you let it go, you let it go, you let it go. And then the moment it starts to grow, you're like, wait, you can't do this. You can't do that. This isn't okay. This isn't okay. And it really changes everything. It changes your relationships with friends. It changes relationships, dating. It changes marriages, <laughs> relationships with parents, you know, yep. mm -hmm. everything. That is that is so true because uh there's a book my wife and I are reading now called Set Boundaries Find Peace mm. by Nedra Nedra Tawab. Really good book. We're reading it together. And like you said, boundaries. I'm glad you brought that up because very few people like to enforce boundaries because they're afraid they might lose somebody if they set a boundary. And sometimes you're supposed to lose those people. You know, I think the, the idea that everyone is supposed to stay in your life forever mm -hmm. is a bizarre concept. Um, yeah, if you create a boundary and you lose someone, you are supposed to lose that person. The end. That doesn't mean you move the line so that that person fits into your group. It doesn't mean you take the boundary away. It means you have to stand firm on it, you know? Um, because that, that also speaks to their character, you know, to, to create a boundary and then you lose a person that you supposedly think, you know, you're supposed to be around forever. That, that speaks to their character more than yours, you know? Um, but yeah, I, a lot of people are constantly just like, you're just so happy. You're just so peaceful. And it's because I don't talk to nobody. Like, you stress me? Ah, we're done. You will stress yourself before you stress me. And you'll stress yourself trying to call me. You'll stress yourself trying to get in contact with me with your nonsense before you can stress me. Because I I can't. You know? Um, I am in my own delusional, peaceful world. And you can't come mess it up just because you don't have boundaries. And just because you're deflated because you're giving 100% to the world. That is a personal problem. Mm -hmm. You're deflated because you're giving 100% to the world and I give to you. You can't give anything to me. So where do I win from this? <laughs> you know? So it's weird to me that, yeah. Um, I used to be a very big people pleaser. And mm -hmm. I'm sure those same people are just like, ah, she has changed. And yep, I have, <laughs> you know, like, yep, uh, she sure has changed because boundaries came into play, you know, and no's became no's and yeses became yeses. And there is no more maybes. I think taking away maybes is a big thing. Um But yeah, I see a lot of people that are drained. They're drained daily because they don't have boundaries. And it's not even that they do physical work. Mm -hmm. I mean, because from morning to nighttime, they're dealing with the world's problems and they only have 12 seconds before bed to deal with their problems, <laughs> you know? And it's like, you're not Superman. What is, what is, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Superman has, like, <laughs> Not, not, I, I totally agree. I'm, and I'm the same way because I'll be uh, 46 next week, and I was like, I don't have time. Like my my time is too valuable, and anybody's not gonna get it. Um, I've been around for a while, so I'm like, if you're not about peace or about building or about you know future things, you know uh, foundations and and legacies, I, I don't have time for it. And that goes for, but that even goes for friendships, mm -hmm. because if you're you're also a reflection of your friends, right? And I think people are like, oh yeah, my friends do coke, and you know they stay out of stripper, but I'm not that type of guy. And I'm like, you kind of are. 
<laughs> you know, like if you're a married man and none of your friends are married, you're a single man. Mm -hmm. um, and you're going to continue to act as a single man. You know, you're never going to magically start thinking, oh, no, let's not have homes in our friends. Like, no, you know, it's not going to magically stop because you're around a whole bunch of single men doing single activities. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I never really understood that mindset of giving too much to the whole world mm -hmm. and then be thing for yourself. And they call it selfish if you give to yourself first. They're like, well, why would you do that? And it's like, even in the airplane, they're telling you to put the mask on first and then you help the child. You are the child. <laughs> I have to save myself. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. Because if you don't save yourself, nobody else will. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you know, as they say, self self preservation is the the first law or something like that. So, now nah, I get it, <laughs> Preska. This has been a phenomenal episode. Uh, for those who who might not know or who never worked with you before, give us all your contact information. So we can bring you some more clients and some more business. Um, my Instagram is Priska Ndaya. Um, I'll send it <laughs> so you can the bottle. It's a little, but yeah. And um, that's actually the name all across everything. My Twitter, my YouTube that I don't post on. Um <laughs> my Instagram, my Facebook, it's all, yeah. And then my um, hair product line is Simply Motherland. And that's as simple as it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll have it tagged. I'll have you in the, uh, in the comment section. I'll pin it on my comment section. So after those who watch this or if you're listening on a podcast, I'll make sure I have that linked up so they can contact you there. Yeah, so thank you once again for being a guest. I appreciate the time and all the knowledge and the wisdom that you have brought to this episode. Brave Arts community, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share this video with someone. And make sure if you're listening via podcast that you leave a rating and review. By doing so, it puts you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free stuff? This has been a phenomenal episode. This is Sean Heineman with special guest. Please, Scott and Daya. All right, people. Take care.